looks like Foxy. I think Charles came to play tonight. Dominique does not disappoint. What a play by t -Man. Jimmy Smith hitting the three. Come again. Big time plays here by Steve Smith. And welcome to Atlanta and uh, another edition of Open Court. I'm Ernie Johnson. Uh, we are talking slam dunk today, and we have absolute basketball royalty in the house. Wait till you get a look at this lineup. Let's start with, uh, with Steve Smith, the Michigan State Spartan. Always a pleasure to see you, Smitty. Thank you, Ernie. If, uh, and Smitty's got championship ring. You know, he's got, he's got all kind of credentials. Played for a lot of teams. Played 14 years in the NBA. Thank you, Ernie. Tracy McGrady, seven-time All-Star, <laughs> scoring champion a couple of times. Wonderful to have you with us. Thank you. High school graduate. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. 16 years at Turner for Kenny the Jet Smith. And I almost came on with gum in my mouth. Yeah. You've done that before. That's a long story. <laughs> a couple of championships, <laughs> of course, in the career of uh, Kenny the Jet Smith with the Houston Rockets. What can I say about the guy sitting to my right? My goodness. The you already doc, talked about me. The, <laughs> to my oh. immediate right. Oh, okay, my bad. Uh, Dr. J, it's wonderful to see you. All good. Nice Thank to see you. Thank you so much for good being be here. here. Uh, first slam dunk champion of all time, Hall of Famer, only guy to be the MVP in both the ABA and the NBA, and uh, wonderful to I really look forward to hearing your stories about, uh, about the dunk and about your career. going to be awesome. Charles here. 14 years, Arnie, just in case you forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I've, I know about each and every one of them. Um, and so that's two Hall of Famers on the panel. And now a third Hall of Famer, Dominique Wilkins. How you been, Dee? Good. Human, going, eh? The human highlight film, also the human uh, fender bender. Uh, thank you for getting here, despite the fact that you, you, took, you took a shot on the way now to Now, that was the a airport. hoax. No, that was, that was a hoax. No, it never happened. <laughs> <laughs> and next to him is, uh, is the human freeze frame, uh, Steve Kerr. <laughs> no, the, the, the all-time leader in the NBA in three-point percentage. Why do you guys always invite me to these dunk shows? Seriously, I've been invited to like five panels on dunk. They said you used like, to have good views. Yeah, I, that's about it. I'm, I'm looking at this panel, I'm like, what? Why am I here? Well, thank uh, you it's for all, the invitation. It's called diversity. Yeah, diversity. It's called diversity. Um, Dr. J, let's talk about let's talk about the dunk. And let's okay. what's what's amazing to me is when you're at UMass at a time when dunking is outlawed in college basketball. That's that's that that's, is correct. That's like it's like you going to a restaurant and they're saying you can't eat. <laughs> <laughs> that's, different. that's different. How frustrating <laughs> was that for you? The, the thing <clears throat> about it, Ernie, is, you know, I started dunking in basically in grammar school. But, you know, what you were saying about going to UMass and the dunk being taken out of the game because of Lou Alcinda at UCLA, they tried to, you know, just negate his dominance. And uh, he was still dominant because he developed the sky hook, and they still won, you know, three NCAA championships in a row. Uh, but it hurt a lot of the other guys who, you know, who really loved the dunk. And eventually they took it out of the warm-up line. Mm. And that was dramatic. But, um, you know, for me, uh, we lived with it. It helped me form some finger rolls and some other things around the basket. And then when I got out of college after my junior year, you know, I had saved up a lot of energy for dunking in games. <laughs> and some people had to pay the penalty. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> do you think, though, uh, if, piggyback on our game today, mm -hmm. do you think if some of our big guys uh, didn't dunk as much, they would have developed a Kareem-type shot or developed their game more? Because I do think one thing about the big guys today, I don't think they're fundamentally sound on other aspects of their game, like sky hooks, jump mm -hmm. hooks, and things like that. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Now, you know, one of the criticisms about today's game is that there aren't enough big men who are quality players who are, are diverse in their approach to the game. So, you know, you got a lot of big man camps and big man schools, and, uh, you know, some guys, if they can either dunk or they try to go outside and shoot three-pointers. And uh, so your point is well taken. I, I mean, I think there would be further development of the player if something was taken away from them. But if you took the dunk out of the game, 
You know, right now, I mean, I think the game would suffer. T Mac, when was the first time you saw Dr. Doug? Jeez. Um, classic films. The one on, on the Lakers when he cuffed it. I mean, that's like mm. the, the greatest of all time. You know, favorite dunk. Stolen, I think, by the doctor. Yes, he's got it. He carry comes. We rock the baby to sleep and slam dunk. Was it the Cooper dunk? Yes, the mm. Cooper dunk. So it was in game <laughs> was in game dunks more than slam more than dunk competition in 1976 that Yes, in game dunks. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know, <clears throat> with Tracy here, uh, in an all star game, Tracy threw the ball on the backboard and went and caught it and dunked it. And uh, he probably saw the fish that saved Pittsburgh, because I did that move. <laughs> <laughs> I did that move with the fish that saved Pittsburgh back in 1978. And then there was a lot of excitement when Tracy did it in an all star game. And I was just sitting there thinking, I was like, when did I see young fella? I have to tell him about that. Hey, just, just so you know, Doctor, I was much more inspired by Set Shot Buford than I was by you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, 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 I just wanted to point that out. Actually, <laughs> Tracy, how old were you in 1978? I <laughs> hope. Oh, 79 here, buddy. He wasn't born. born. He wasn't born. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so you didn't Dang steal you. it. <laughs> <laughs> he has a real good uh, alibi. He got, he got a, no, no plagiarism no here. Alibi. No plagiarism. Oh, but you man. know what, Ernie? When I, was, I grew up in New York City, and the doctor was playing with the Nets. And uh, so he, Larry Keenan, Super John Williamson, those were the guys I always watched early on. And Doc had the big fro. And we used to always have jokes that Doc could go, he was able to dunk on people so much because he had the big fro. And he put the ball behind his head, and then he move his hands, and then he pull it back out out of his head. And dunk it out. <laughs> so it was just like, but his his illusion and and I think and his dunk was was great. But I think the way he, all of us have probably admired more the way he carried himself off the court, because he had a, a demeanor. It was the first time we saw what a superstar sports figure in basketball was. I think we've seen it, like, in music. We've seen it in other characters. But nobody had seen what a superstar basketball player was until we saw Dr. J. Take you know me back. Too, uh, I Go ahead. Too, just to piggyback on what Doc said, it, dunk, the dunk came back in my first year of high school. I think it was 77, you know. He wasn't born either. He wasn't born. <laughs> 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 he wasn't here yet. But it, it did. I think the game suffered because you had so many great athletes and, you, you know, you get a breakaway, you go down the court and you had to drop it in or lay it up. I used to go to North Carolina State and watch David Thompson practice, and he would just jump over the rim and just kind of punch the ball in. He was an incredible <laughs> leaper. Yeah. You've you, you played with uh, David sure, Thompson. Sure. Unbelievable leaper. But it really hurt the game by not letting those athletes really display their game above the rim. What, were, what are your memories of 76 in that first dunk contest? I mean, did you know what to expect? Uh, what, what was about what this was going to set the stage for uh, for years to come? Well, no, no way could I have imagined it still be showing the classic sports <laughs> tape today in black and white, <laughs> and that uh, and that it would get the reaction that it did. But uh, but I knew what I was going to do. I mean, you know, I'm I'm a kind of a lines and columns guy, so I, I always know what I'm going to do, what I'm going to at least attempt to do. But you knew that <laughs> night you were going to bring the house down with that foul line, with the foul line dunk in '76. Yeah, at, well, David had just. Done it like a 360. Oh, and we were in Denver, so that was his home crowd. So I, I didn't know whether it would have the effect that it did, but I was hoping that it did. And that sends everyone really. Doc, when was the first time you went from the free throw line? I know the first time you dunked was in grammar Middle school. school. Right. Hey, Middle school. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't really till the Rucker League. And in the Rucker League, after my junior college, I, I played five years straight in the in the Rucker League in New York, uh, up at uh, you know 55th and 155th and 8th Avenue, and I think the crowd kind of egged that on because, you know, we're running up and down, we're just playing freelance basketball, and you know I started taking off farther and farther out, and then the announcer started saying, "You got to measure that one, you got to measure that," <laughs> and and uh, eventually, you know, they started guesstimating how far out I was jumping from, and I realized that I could jump from the foul line and, and get to the basket and, and complete the play. How did what, how did what Doctor uh, was able to do impact you, Nick? Well, actually, growing up, and I told Doctor this my first year in the league, I grew up wanting to be like 
doc. I mean, I used to watch all his games, and so I patterned a lot of things I did as far as attacking the basket after doc, because I used Duncan for a tool for intimidation. And I tell people all the time, it really wasn't who I was, but when you're a great athlete, a great leaper, they always equate you with being a dunker. And I tell people all the time, it's hard to get 26,000 points on dunks, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'm walking more, more than just dunk. Right. But for me, it was to keep the bat, the big guys, you know, from wanting to block your shot. And so the way Doc attacked on the break, I watched that over and over and over again. And I felt like if I got on the break and I got the ball, and if you were in, under the basket, you were in trouble because you weren't going to block the shot. Matter of fact, you might be on a poster if you didn't get out of the way. <laughs> you know, one of the things that Dominique never gets enough credit for, and Doc probably, I think, was the best ever at it. I think, uh, I can't remember everybody who I would put on the list. A lot, everybody here can dunk. Steve, Steve Kerr probably can dunk. No. no. Well, have you ever dunked? <laughs> no. no. Not in a game. But but the thing eight is, foot basket. no, no, but, but tennis ball, eight, or the eight foot basket. basket. Yeah. Eight foot yeah, basket. Tennis stuff. ball and an eight foot basket. The, the, the one thing, Ernie, that people never understand, <laughs> being able to dunk on another person, these two guys are two of the best, and I'm not just saying that because they sit here. Like, I don't remember myself dunking on people that often. I think a couple times. But these guys, <clears throat> they made, you know, some of Doc's, legendary footage that he's dunking on people. It's you know, not. people talk about the Michael Cooper dunk. You know, he had a dunk on uh, on Bob Gross of Portland. He had mm -hmm. one on Bill Walden. Uh, you're like, wow. <laughs> but it's, I tell people, it's very difficult to have in-game dunks. It's not so much that it's difficult to have in-game <clears throat> dunks. It's the way that he was doing it. Mm. The freestyling. He was doing dunk contests in game. Yeah, that's what I mean. On people. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> that's what you, okay. Yeah, you, I mean, anybody can go out there and dunk, but I'm talking about, like, to do... What, a, he was... Yeah, like, to do a fancy dunk on another right, person, right. that's what you don't see right. that often. Right, i tell you a prime example. Bob Lanier is, is a dunk they show now that I went baseline. I went to the middle and the whole team shift, and I went back to the baseline, I jumped, and I think I closed my eyes because Bob Lanier covered the rim, <laughs> and I was going up, and I turned, and he was coming down, I was still going up, and I dunked <laughs> on the buzzer. 13 on the shot clock. Down low for Dominique. Baseline drive. Dominique. Oh, my goodness. Did you see that jam? And he stood there and he watched me. For nine years, he never spoke to me. <laughs> <laughs> and I asked him, I said, you know, we retired. You know, the game is over. I said, you can speak to me. And I said, why you don't speak? He said, you know, it was tough for me to ever speak to you again. When I had to go home and hear my kids, let me know how you embarrassed me on national TV. I didn't ever want to talk to you. Hey, you know what's so funny about that? Elvin Hayes stopped speaking to me, man, for about 12 years from one dunk. Get out of here. One dunk in the Capitol. Well, they take it personal. One dunk in the Capitol Center. And, you know, it was, it was down the lane, and Wes came over, so I was kind of a little worried about Wes because Wes could hurt you. And he jumped up, and he always jumped with two hands. So he jumped with two hands, and I moved the ball over to the middle, and kaboom, right? So kaboom. It's, in, it's, in, it's in the Capitol Center. Kaboom. And every time I saw him, man, he would never say anything to me. And then we, when we went to uh, 50 Greatest Players in 1996, and we sat and we had dinner. I hadn't spoken to him since that dunk, and this was at least 10 years later. What were the first, and did he, did he bring it up? Uh, no, 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 he didn't really bring it up. Did you, you bring know, it up? I, I was just glad that we were kind of, it was <laughs> yeah. me, him, Wilt, and uh, I think maybe Bill Russell, and we were all sitting around, and I it like was just like, it was just like mouthing. And I realized that mm -hmm. this guy had not spoken to me, and, you know, I knew why he was upset. Yeah. But he didn't have to be upset that long. You know, you don't have to take it personal. Really. <laughs> well, there, there are like 600 players that Charles won't talk to. Uh, <laughs> when we come back, uh, talking more about in-game dunks uh, as opposed to uh, dunk contest dunks. And also, we'll, we'll revisit what happened in, in 2000, one of the great dunk contests of all time. Tracy oh. McGrady mm. was sensational. Mm. That night, uh, but his cousin Still was, came his cousin was just a little better. Seated. He was third, <laughs> and and of course Dominique Wilkins, a couple of times winning that. And if you, if you listen, and to got actually, actually, it should have been yeah. four. Actually, yes. I won four. I just got credit for two. Yeah. <laughs> <There you laughs> go. Well, he'll expound on that as we right. continue on Open Court right after this.
So you saw that Vince Carter from 2000 in Oakland uh, in the slam dunk contest, and you see some some in-game dunks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, more satisfying in a game for you? Oh, no question. You know, I mean, from eight-foot basket days until, you know, the last NBA game in Milwaukee, you know, I had this thing, and I, I talk about it in my book, Ernie. Oh, that's right Dr. Jed, the right autobiography. Right there, right there. We got, I mean, <laughs> got a little shameless plug. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, was not saying, I don't know. If, <laughs> we, have, we have 14 cameras November here. I don't, I don't know if any of them are going to be able to yeah, focus but, on that. But, uh, I, but I, I do talk about imposing your will on other players from the park days to the college days, high school days, college days, and, and pro days. And Dominique will relate to this. You know, when you have like 11 out of 12 guys on the team who could dunk the ball like we do with my high school team, we would intimidate uh, teams pre-game. Right. You know, after the warm-up lines, you warm up, you warm up, you got 11 guys dunking the ball, you steal their crowd, They're done. and then you put a full-court press on in the first quarter, <laughs> and it's like over. Right, right. It's like over. Yeah. The game's going to be like 60 to 20. So imposing your will is one of the things that we talk about and that I firmly believe in. Was, uh, was it what you did to the other player, the fact that you were able to pull off the dunk, or what it did to the crowd that... that uh, well, you you, you got to look at your matchup first, you know, and, and uh, this happened several times where we played against very good players, but they get a little disheartened if, uh, if they get dunked on, if you put a good move on them. You know, you start stealing their crowd. You shake their confidence. You shake their confidence, and suddenly they're not the same player that they were the previous game when you won on the court. Yeah. Go back to 2000. Uh, that was my favorite dunk contest. Um, I thought Vince was unbelievable. <clears throat> yeah. And, and what was great, it wasn't an all tricked up, gimmicky kind of a contest. Mm -hmm. It was just good dunkers mm -hmm. doing their thing, and nobody really took. 14 tries to get anything right. done. I mean, it was rapid okay. fire, and the crowd was so into it. Mm. Tracy, any other year, you might win that thing. Steve Francis was very good mm. that year, and you got kind of dinged up in that contest. You finished third, but what you and Vince and, and Stevie were able to do that night was us. No, looking, ba looking back, it was one of the better dunk contests, um, that not being a part of, but just witnessing. Um, I can remember, I think it was probably my third year with Toronto, and Vince, I knew he was going to get in the dunk contest. I didn't want to get in because I already know what was going to happen. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, knew, I, I knew I wasn't coming in first place because I've seen all his dunks in practice or in games. Um, so we were arguing back and forth. You know, he was trying to, to get me to, to get in the dunk contest. I want no part of it. So it was a last-minute decision for me to get in. Got in and, you know, already knew what was going to happen. His first dunk, I felt sorry for Jerry Stackhouse because he had to go after it. <laughs> All right, here is Vince Carter with his first stop. Let's go home. Let's go home, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go home. Let's, let's go home. Everybody was still just going crazy over his dunk while Jerry is out there about to attempt his first, <laughs> his first dunk. Well, Jerry Stackhouse following a very tough act. You can't come out the Bay Room. You don't go singing after Michael Jackson. There's certain things you just don't do. He wasn't out there trying to do uh, all these gimmick dunks. I mean, it was just go out there and, and be creative. And, you know, we attempted, you know, our, our first dunk and, and made it. So when, so when Vince hung with the elbow i've seen you'd it. seen that how many times well i've you know i we're, we're both in florida he was a little older than me he played in aau ball he played on the the senior team and i was on the junior team in the layup line well he used to go up the ball almost touch the top of the backboard look down and just drop it in like that <laughs> i was like this kid is unbelievable yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know he was my cousin at the time <laughs> I had no idea. this was that was my cousin <laughs> that was the you know calling that and being part of like yeah, what was it that, that you said kenny I, I can't recall it's over it's over ladies and gentlemen it's over <laughs> I, just, I, I know no, no, because i mean i was i was you know watching him at university of north carolina and see him in the summer times because i used to go back i i didn't know he could jump that i guess not just high but with that much intensity and uh so all of the the energy that I, I, was, I was a fan. 
I, I, for real. I mean, it was that electric what he, he uh, Steve Francis, and, and um, Trace McGrady did. But the 2000 Olympics, um, Kenny, speaking of Vince, you know, watching this game, me and I think it was me and Tim Hardaway and Allen Houston when he dunked over Frederick Weiss. I, I've seen him dunk on different players, dunk on Dikembe a lot because I let him go by me. You know, I wasn't playing too much D. But to see him <laughs> dunk over a seven footer, I mean, that was and the to most. To clear him. To clear to him. actually clear him, jump over top of him. You know, because you see in a dunk contest, guys say, okay, jump over me. Right, right. Two this steps. is in the game. But well, Kenny, you two, know the reaction. You usually go crazy, right? We didn't move for about four <laughs> seconds because I said, Tim, did we just jump over? That's the craziest dunk I've seen ever. French media called it yes. the dunk of death uh, when, uh, when Vince did that to Frederick Weiss. Uh, Dominique, 1985 and 1990, you win it. Uh, you watch Spud win it in Dallas in 86, and then you and, you and Michael in the Battle of the Titans in Chicago, and, and he gets the nod. Um, which of those four do you remember the most? The the one two I wins or the, <laughs> one, or the one you lost to Mike? I lost. Really? You know, the funny thing is that all the dunk contests that we were the part of, we never practiced any of those dunks before a dunk contest. Come on now. Never, not once. Everything was spontaneous. We did dunks, you know, as the contest went on, we thought of different things to do. I never worked on dunks before a dunk contest. But that dunk contest was, was one to remember because the way we approached that contest, we were, man, we were going at it, you know. Both of us wanted to win, but more importantly, we wanted to get the fans really involved. And in Chicago, it was pretty easy to do, but, uh, what do you think about today when guys don't get in the dunk contest? This is my opinion. And why did it's you only guys, my opinion. And what did, why did you and Michael make an effort to I do I think it? the guys today don't really want to know who the best is, mm. to be honest with you. Mm. Because uh, the dunk contest for me was just something to give the fans for the weekend. It doesn't really, doesn't really say who you are as a person. It's something you give the fans. Even though I lost the one to Michael, it was no big deal for me. It was a dunk contest, something we gave the fans for a weekend. It's not something that's going to stick in my mind for the rest of my life. I'm going to be bitter about it. That wasn't what it, it wasn't for that. But I think these guys now just don't want to go head up with the best player. I'll pose that question to T-Mex since you, you know, you just got finished playing this era. Why is it? Why is what? Guys don't want to get in a dunk contest. Your opinion. Who are great dunkers in our league? I mean, it's, it's not that. No, we mean great players. Why they don't want to do it. They're not great dunkers. LeBron's, LeBron's a great LeBron. dunker. <laughs> yeah. Who else? But wouldn't you love to see LeBron in the dunk contest? No, really. Really? No, I, no, seriously. I don't, I mean, I don't think he's creative, but I don't think he's on a creative level as Vince. Or I'm not going to see something I haven't seen before mm -hmm. from LeBron. One of the things that might be happening, too, is that, you know, guys playing today are corporations. And they have corporate plans yeah. in terms of how they're going to be marketed, mm -hmm. the brand, brand, the whole thing. So losing in the slam dunk, con slam dunk contest, and everybody's going to lose except for the winner, those guys don't want that to be yeah, a part of that. Or their agents or handlers or managers don't want that to be a part think of, of what LeBron, LeBron has the biggest brand. Everybody else, I mean, why not get in it? You're not as big as LeBron. You know, it's only going to build your brand. But that's who you see getting in it, the guys who maybe need that boost in their brand. We can't be just putting guys out there. That's that's it's not good TV number one. But we we need our stars to be more like Doc accountable. Did, Doc did not have to get in the contest multiple years. You know, Dominique didn't have to do it multiple years. Michael Jordan didn't have to do it multiple years. I think there's one other issue though. I think the bar has been raised so high that and so many things have been done already. To the point where we're, you know, guys are jumping over cars and there's props and everything else. I think a guy like LeBron's probably watching it. Like, what do you, what do you want from me now? Like, right. you know, you guys have these incredible battles, these individual battles, but now it's become almost a circus. And but, I, I don't think some guys probably don't want to take part in the circus. My thing is too, if you're gonna jump over a car, you got to jump over the over the top of the car. You can't jump over. Yeah, yeah. You got to jump over that today. You can't jump over it. Some of us can do that today. Jump over the hood. You, know, you, see, high, you, you know, see the but, company we keep. Know, hold on. I'm some just saying. Hey, hold, 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 hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I want to. Wait. No. 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 Which one of us could jump over the hood today? 
I, Probably T Mac. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because yeah. you said, because I definitely. Dude, that'd be funny. I might kill myself trying to jump over the hood of a car. I don't think you can sit on the hood right now. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you look, at, you look at the contest that Dr. J and, and Ice and David Thompson, those guys wasn't in that dunk contest. It wouldn't been. It wouldn't have been historical. Right. You know, you had great names, the greatest mm -hmm. players in the league at that time. All those guys got in the dunk contest. Um, before we go to break, Tracy had said that he saw Vince do a lot of this stuff in practice. You ever seen Michael do something in practice that still made your jaw your jaw drop? Not really. Everything was in everything was in a game with him. I mean, he he would dunk in practice, but I, I would think these guys would probably agree. When you get to a game, you got the adrenaline kicks in. See, but you know what though? The, when we were at the University of North Carolina, after practice, we used to have dunk contests. So it was a guy named Curtis Hunter, myself, Michael, that would always like at the end of practice stay around and we. To have a dunk contest. And, uh, and then another guy, Warren Martin, who couldn't dunk really. He used to try, seven footer, but he used to try to get a dunk contest. But <laughs> nice shot. You would, yeah, hey, I'm, I'm sure just, he appreciates that. But yeah. all. Way to shoot him down. So <laughs> he used to, we used to call it the Dr. J. So he'd, he'd rock, we call it, he'd cuff the ball and call it do the Dr. J. And so he'd just turn and, and put it here. But when we played against Maryland and he, he, he gets a steal, off and I'm ahead. He doesn't throw it ahead. I'm a little <laughs> upset. He actually, he did, he actually had to run because he didn't pass me the ball because I was ahead of him. But what he did afterwards, and when he rocked it, I had never seen him do that. I knew that he could cuff it and dunk. But then he said he he, he didn't plan on doing. It. He said he took off too far. And, he, and then he had to keep pushing himself to get to the air, and he dunked it down. But he had jumped too far, and so he had, that was the first time he really had done that dunk that way. For, for great leapers, that's called putting the air brake on. <laughs> you're pumping it like that, you got the air brake on. Got to keep you up there for a little bit longer. We're going to put the on-air brake on right now, take a, take a quick break here on Open Court, and be back with more talking uh, some of the smaller guys who can get up when we come back. You can get more Open Court simply by logging on to NBA.com. T-Mac, how do little guys do that? I'm still wondering. You know, my favorite was uh, little guy was Robert Pack. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pack used to yeah, get you. Yeah. That was my favorite. He sneak in there on you, boy. Yeah. But how about, I mean, you've seen Nate Robinson do this lately. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's unbelievable. I, I really don't know, man. Um, little guy going there and, 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 and be so creative at that size, you know, and the slam dunk contest, what Nate Robinson was doing was, I mean, it was incredible. I think the, the smaller guys, you know, when I was in that dunking, trying to dunk it on people ever, <laughs> the, you, you have an advantage because they always think you're going to pass. Because they don't really want you to drop off to their man and, get, and, and let the big guy dunk on you. So you get that, that late jump all the time. And, you know, the late jump, as you get older, turns into a floater. But and you're earlier, if you late jump and you can dunk it, you can catch big guys all the time. You've judged these contests before. I mean, when the smaller guy is on there, are, is something about that impress you more or not? Or do they it, it, it really doesn't impress me more, but it does affect the crowd. Like when Spud won, <laughs> it was the... No, no <laughs> insult, man. No, yeah. no, I'm yeah. telling you, look. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I'm, what's a judge? No, no. no. Just, I used to call I'm, him I'm really judge. less impressed <laughs> when a 6'10 guy's out there dunking right. the ball, right. or a seven-footer. Right. He's supposed to be able to dunk the ball. Yeah. So little guys who can dunk, I mean, I, I, I like seeing it. And uh, if they're creative and they do 360s <laughs> and stuff like that, it's really good. But they got to nail it. Yeah. So yeah. whether they're 5'6", whether 6'6", they're six, 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 or 7'6", if they nail it and they spike it, you know, that's when I'm impressed. Right. Don, so, 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 but you did hear, Kendrick always call it, refers to you as the Russian judge. <laughs> well, well, why about the Russian? Seven, you know, remember uh, everybody was Russian. giving ten. No, Michael. Seven. Michael's the Russian. No, no, Michael's man. the toughest on him. No, he come up with sixes, and we look over there. Come on, Mike. Guy should have at least a seven no, or eight. I've sat over there, go. Oh, that was a ten. That was great. You go, yeah, that is good. 
six. <laughs> so how much? How much? I, I ain't no hater. No, no, it's like it is good. Was, Doc, six. Doc, how much? I could appreciate how much a great peaking dunk. was there when you you looked at something and you heard the crowd and then. When you're looking down the table, well, once they're all up, or, we all, we or, all or looked, did you, you all could see them all? Oh, yeah. No, no, it wasn't peaking to decide what you were going to do. I mean, you had your mind made up, right. but then when you see you got a seven and another guy's giving them like a four or whatever, you start thinking twice about it. Or they go tens and you go seven or eight. Yeah, yeah. We, are, we, <laughs> we, we probably are. We probably are the best <laughs> judges. I don't mind giving a ten to a ten. Right. But, but let me and everybody you. in the building knows when it's a ten. Mm -hmm. But now if, the problem is that six to nine. Yeah. But somebody who a, a greatest dunk as you are, does it take a lot for you to give a ten? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's it's hard. You like Steve was talking about the bar is raised. You know you have a certain standard, so they got to measure up to that standard. Not that it's necessarily your standard, but it's a group's standard. And if, see, the problem is when when guys miss two or three dunks. And he nailed yeah, that third I, I, dunk, yeah, and you yeah. still get yeah, a nine. I can't, I, I'm not even nine. happy about that. He can't right. get an eight or nine after yeah. three missed dunks. Woo! And Spud Woo! Webb comes through in the clutch to put the pressure on Dominique. How much did you know about what Spud Webb was bringing to the court in Dallas that night? Because I knew you were, he could you jump. Were teammates. I knew he could jump, but I had no idea he was in the gym working on stuff before. So he was doing that in there. private? Yeah, by himself. He didn't tell me. Had you ever he seen had the dunk? element I've of surprise. I've never seen him do some of the stuff he did in, did in that dunk contest. When I knew he could dunk, it was his, his first year, and they were thinking about cutting Spud. So they put him in the game because guards got in foul trouble. We were playing against the Lakers, and I pitched it to him coming down the court, and he jumps, and Kareem goes up to block it. Kareem thought he was going to lay it up. So when he went to lay it up, he pulled it back, and he threw it on Kareem. Everybody in the building was just quiet for about four seconds. <laughs> then it erupted. I said, Mike, you can't cut him. <laughs> 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 you can't cut him. And that's when I knew he could jump, but I'd never seen him do some of the stuff he did in that dunk contest. That was incredible. He did a, man, unbelievable job. Were you guys on the Hawks at the same time? Yes, we were. Yeah. Did you ever tell Mike, you can't cut him? <laughs> <laughs> no, he told him to cut. <laughs> uh, I can't say Mike, anything. You, hey, got, you said Mike, Mike you, you got to cut him. I can't say anything bad about Kenny Z. I can't say anything bad about Kenny. He passed me the ball when I needed this. No, no, I was, hey, was uncuttable then, man. I, uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't that. He didn't catch me in the eighth and ninth year in the league. He caught me. He was one of the four girls who liked to pass, so he was okay. Yeah, no question. Charles and I, my last three years were his first three years in the league. Right. And Charles is the guy who really ushered in the modern era of basketball. He was the guy who came in and teams really had to adjust what they were doing to accommodate his talent. And he came into a championship team. We thought we were getting a rebound, a guy who could rebound the ball. We needed some, Moses needs some rebounding help. So we got a rebound, and then you get this the first practice from the first day of training camp. He might not remember this, but he took over practice. He's a rookie. He's coming in. Of course, he wanted Ivoroni's job. <laughs> He's like, I don't want to play behind Ivoroni. <laughs> and it didn't take long to settle that, but, you know, he was such a special player. And those last three years for me, I mean, he made my job a whole lot easier. You know, I, w I was allowed to get a couple of extra years because of his talent. Uh, I'll tell you a funny story about him, if I may. He was in college his first year, and we're in Auburn to Ray play against Charles. And I didn't know who he was. So I see this guy come out, warm up, and so the game get ready to start. I'm like, this fat guy can't play. <laughs> 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 and I told him the story. I was like... Man, this guy, man, he, he gonna be all right. So anyway, first play comes down. He goes down, he jumps, and I blocks his shot. And I'm like, see, I told you he can't play. <laughs> Big mistake, right? <laughs> Came down the next play, and he went up, and he went up, and I went up, he dunked on our whole front line, <laughs> like three times in a row. And I said to mother, I said, this kid is the real deal. And that's when I kind of developed a respect, a respect for Charles, because I knew then, that he was going to be a special player. I've never seen a guy at his size move the way he moved. Mm. It was incredible. I'm talking from Don't putting the ball on the floor. The cover, right? from yeah. an and we talk about people can can jump elevated, you know, above the rim. And Charles was one of the best.
Thank especially you. at that size. And he was about 6'3", about 265. By I was, then. Uh, you know, that's what he about to know. He's about to two inches since hey, college. You know, you, know, you, know what's funny? you know what's funny about that? I actually was about 295 in college. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was 295 in college. And uh, wow. it, yeah, you had a weight clause in the contract. Oh, yeah, they, they didn't trust had me. To break it down. Can you imagine the Sixers didn't trust my weight? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't, uh, don't judge a book by its cover, but when you see this cover, Dr. J, you know it's a good read. How about that? I slid, I a good slid another one. Another for you. Another you, you know, honey, you got to give. I T want the movie rights. You got to give T <laughs> TNT and NBA TV a lot of credit. The documentary was Brilliant. one of the oh, yeah. best. It, was, it, was, it yeah. was amazing. Brilliant. Without question. All yeah. right, back with more here on Open Court. We're going to wrap things up talking about the greatest dunker of all time. Ooh. Said what? Huh? Yeah. And we welcome you back to Open Court, wrapping up our uh, our show here, focusing on uh, the art of the dunk. Um, so, Doc, I'll ask you, who's the greatest dunker of all time? And you can qualify this any way you want. You could be in dunk contest, in-game dunks. I mean, and, and don't be bashful. Uh, if it's you, we can certainly understand. No, no, no. Uh, well, I think Will Chamberlain. I mean, uh, you know, the 30,000 points that he scored, different than Dominique, who shot a whole lot of jump shots. A lot of them were dunk shots, and you know people who really don't give Wilt enough credit, and the big guys like Shaq and Kareem enough credit uh, or enough conversation. You know, it's almost like the NBA started in 1990 yeah. <laughs> instead of 1946. But uh, but Wilt, you know, he posted numbers uh, when he retired. He was the greatest scorer of all time, and uh, and he imposes Will night in and night out in that little skinny lane. You know, I mean, he was, <laughs> he could dunk from outside the lane because they had the skinny lane. And uh, I would I would put Wilt as the number one dunker. Who's the most stylish dunker of all time, Doc? Uh, it's between Neek and Vince. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> and not Neek because oh. he's here. Yeah. And you can't leave Michael out of the conversation. But with all due respect to Michael and Dominique, uh, some of Vince's dunks were just incredible. Vince. Oh, wow. uh, Steve? Start with you. Uh, it's such a hard question because there's so many different kinds of dunkers. Dominique was a two-footed dunker. Doc was more one-footed. My favorite dunk of all time was Doc on Michael Cooper. I was watching the game live. I was a Laker fan. And I, I remember just sitting in my living room, just my jaw just dropped. Like, I couldn't believe what I had just seen. Uh, but but these two guys are, are right there with Michael. I guess I'm I'm taking the easy way out here. I don't, I, I don't know how you decide between... All these guys. Michael's dunk against the Knicks along the baseline was uh, was also an immediate thought. You know, when you think greatest dunks ever. Nick, I would venture to say Doc, because every kid growing up in my era wanted to be Dr. J. He kind of set the stage for what guys do today, like myself, uh, because there's a lot of dunks that he did that players today still can't do. Some and then the way he did it. You know, I never seen nobody go around the backboard on the other side, come back and finish <laughs> and dunk it in traffic. I mean, <laughs> look at the dunk against Bill Walton. Mm. You know, Bill Walton was one of the great block shot blockers. I mean, he had no chance of blocking Doc shot. So I, I would say he's the best of all time. Well, I think if you're going to go by dunk contests and actual in-game <clears throat> dunks, I'd have to put Doc at the top of the list because obviously we've got the classic sl slam dunk from back in the day. But when you look at highlights, you're like, he just dunk on somebody like that? And uh, Dominique has some great ones. Vince has some great ones. Uh, Michaels has some great ones. But the overall slam dunk, in-game dunks, I don't think anybody had a more complete picture than Doc. Mm. Kenny? Well, being a dunk connoisseur, <laughs> <laughs> I would say I would break it down like this. Spell that tough guy. Yeah, I'd say I'll, I'll spell it. Like <laughs> spell connoisseur right I'll, now. I'll spell, <laughs> it like spell, it. Spell it. I'll spell it like this. Dominique was the best tip dunker that I ever seen. Like so, if you missed a shot, 
the heads had to watch out because he come flying in. Yeah, he, it, there's, there's certain flying. guys that would dunk on you, but certain guys can go get it off misses and still have that ferocity. And he had that. You want me to spell that too? Mm -hmm. just, just, just you ain't word, pretty, spell the word first that has, <laughs> <laughs> Come on, tough guy. Every word that got three syllables, I gotta spell. But anyway, tough guy. So anyway, he had the most ferocity. I would say the the the. Um, the, the most appropriate dunker in game was, was Michael. I thought that in the game and, and, and key moves and key moments, I thought he had those that are signature. You know, his dunks were, you know, down three with 30 seconds to go to get you back in the game. They weren't just freelance. I think Dr. J is the, is the, the king of it. He made it stylish and he made people want to do that. So uh, if you had to go in that tier, and Vince Carter kind of is looking outward to me on that tier of guys because he had the luxury of looking at those three. Took the easy way out, man. <laughs> I like how you put it. Obviously, I'm too young to witness, have witnessed Doc. Um, I have to go with Neek, MJ, and Vince. I mean, you, those three. And I took the easy way. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say Robert Patrick. The only way he did it. The only way he did it. The only way he did it. You didn't let me finish. Okay, I thought you were going to say That's the way the show works. <laughs> Go ahead. You can finish now. So obviously, MJ, Neek, and Vince, the best slam dunk contest dunkers, best in-game dunk uh, dunkers. But I have to go with Vince as the best because I'm, obviously I witnessed him every night and saw what he did. Uh, just some of the creativity uh, that he had on opposing players on their heads. Um, so I, I go with I go with my cousin. He was born in '79. That's fair. That's he was, fair. He was a bad boy, <laughs> and he brought a lot of you know creativity and, and power on. No, the, not, the, See, the difference was but, I know um, Vince was great. Yes. But the, you know how when guys dunk and go, they scream ah and they dunk. The difference with Neek, the opposing guy was screaming. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, it, that was, like, I'm dead serious, man. The other guy's like, ah. That was the difference between and Dominique one a, and one B, one C. Did you scream that? Was, did you scream that night you got out of the way of Dominique? Remember the night that uh, you went up with Neek, and then you, were you screaming when you backed off? Let me tell you something. I, that's just tell you the genius of Charles Barkley. <laughs> when you make it a bad decision, then right in the middle of you make this proper decision and just get <laughs> out the way. You have to get out the way. My brain was working in the heat of the moment, Ernie. That's not easy to do. <laughs> Ernie, I tell you what made it more satisfying, and I heard when we were dunking on people, is that big guys love to block shots. Sure. They weren't taking charges. They were challenging your shot. So it was more satisfying to catch a Robert Parrish or a Moses Malone or one of those big guys who like to go up and challenge. It was not, no better feeling. Mm -hmm. Smitty, you know, the it, definitive it, answer is coming right here. The Mount Rushmore of dunkers are right here. You're talking about Neek and, and, and Dr. J, and obviously Michael and Vince, the new age coming up. But I think the had the most impression on me was Dr. J growing up. And then 1B is Dominique. Dominique's the reason why I wore number 21 in college, because of Neek. And so these two sitting right here, not because they're sitting here, they, because of my era. I was born a little bit after you, 79. You <laughs> was born in 79, I'm 69. Dr. J made the dunk for everybody. Well, we're, that's why we're talking about because of Dr. J. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's the Mount Rushmore. Doc is in this stratosphere by himself. Yep. You yeah. Know. Should we have no mentioned question. David Thompson in this? Oh, without question. Yeah, yeah. we sure but, should. But, but I, you know, Neek is that guy that I tried to emulate growing up. So you can, Doc is, this, you know, Doc is you in did. his own class. You both black. <laughs> I, I'm a little caramel, you know, Nick a little darker. Okay. <laughs> the godfather of the dunk right here. Uh, hey, thank you, Ernie. Doctor, you thank know, you. It's great, great to have yes. I think, I think uh, we're done. Just about, yeah. Can I add one thing? You may. So, you know, I mean, I think that with the conversation about dunks and <clears throat> elevation of status, you know, when you're when you're in the playoffs every year, and you, it, the playoffs are a different stage. Mm -hmm. So, if you have guys who never get to the playoffs, mm -hmm. you know, they might never get their props if they go to the playoffs once or twice during their during their career. I was fortunate enough, ABA and NBA, to go to the playoffs every year and go to six different championship series, four in the NBA and two in the ABA. So I got a chance to showcase my talent, you know, 
on a world stage, not necessarily with the ABA, it was sort of like a semi-world stage, but still a world stage. And, uh, and if you pull off plays and you make highlights during that time, it makes an indelible impression on people that last through the decades. So I had a little advantage in that department. And then we got to get Tracy brought up to speed. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get, get him in the back looking at some footage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, I, and I say to you, Doc, and I say to you, Neek, uh, on behalf of NBA fans all over uh, the world, thanks for the memories as we talk slam dunk. And thanks for your time today. Uh, we'll see you next time on Open Court.